Hello, I am Scrimshire and I'm going to do another walkthrough for one of my productions. This time it is the recent single Love in Dreams which features Idris Rahman on saxophone. Um, and yeah, let's, let's, let's dive in and have a look at what we've got. So this initially began out of some other work I was doing one day. Uh, the synthesizer which forms the basis of this was I was using I'd been playing with in a library project that I was I was writing so I'm going to show you how that works because that's a big part of how this is so let's have a look at the Korg. So the Minilog's cool in a lot of ways one is that there's this mixer section essentially there's two sound sources on here VCO1 and VCO2 so if I play a chord and turn up VCO1 sounds like that. If I turn that down and turn up VCO2, then that sounds a little different. And I can mix the two together. I can play with the filtering. And what was really crucial for this particular track is that I can play with the pitch independently for each source. So now you understand how that goes. This is actually it on the project itself. And what I did here was to essentially play or improvise an entire take on the synthesizer. Just play that all in with all the pitch changes and all that kind of stuff and trying to feel some evolutions and movements and take it into different places. And that's the very, very first thing I did. Uh, no beats, nothing else going on at this point in time. I then had an associated tempo which I could work from. I could hear this coming rather than as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I could hear a natural, in my mind at least, a natural waltz. I really, really wanted to do something that had a bit more of a strong jazz feel to it. So I went digging around for some drum samples and this is one of them. And then there was a second sample that I used as well. And I layered the two up. And that formed the absolute sort of kicking off point for me. I knew that I had uh, one single chord that was being played in terms of the synthesizers, so I worked out some options around that, the roads here. From that, some additional dynamics with piano stabs. All of this taken over on the north. ones we've got two here not really sure why I've laid up that double there but why not two's always good and then I came over onto the Moog and had a play around with some bass ideas um, this is a very fortunate playthrough for me, um, improvising onto the bass and trying to get something that felt natural, um, not a natural thing for me to do. And it's nothing too complicated, but there's some nice bits in here. And essentially that's where it all began. So I had this idea um, developed some dynamics and some format into it. And decided that it was a goer. <laughs> 
And when I get to that point, um, one of the things that I felt was that I was using uh, some freely available drum samples and that wasn't going to be satisfactory for me personally. As I've said before in previously on these walkthroughs, you know, it's not like I'm a digger and I'm, I'm going through finding like perfect little drum samples on records. I did take these uh, these particular samples from um, probably from Splice or somewhere like that. Just to get the process moving, I want to. When I'm writing, I want to move quickly. I like to move as quickly as possible. I like to capture the idea and I like to capture the feeling that's in my heart at that point in time. So going to somewhere like Splice and going, well, I want this sort of thing. Have we got a three four, or can I cut it into a three four time? Um, and 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 do that. It allows me to move on and get the get the ideas out, transcribe what's in my brain. But you know they're freely available. Anyone could be using that sample. I don't really want to do that. So. I've then sent that off to Chris Boots, as ever, and said, what can you do with this? Can you play some like jazz drums? And yes, indeed he did. So let's have a little listen to these. I always want to get close to what I originally put in the demo, but I do tend to tell Chris that he's free to interpret that and then move around with that. And obviously this is jazz, so, we wanted movement and space for him to sort of develop what was going on. So it's close to what I had before, but also, I mean, if you listen sonically, it's quite different. So that also leaves writing issues once you start to change those sonic spaces. The previous one filled a lot of air in the track. Chris's, I mean, I could have maybe produced it to be a little bit more dense as a sound um, but it opened up more space and one of the things that I wanted to do was bring more electronics to the track. I approached Matthew Gordon also known as Pi Eye Collective he's just released an incredible album on my Albert's Favourites record label called Salvation you really should check it out. He uh, at the time had a modular uh, setup um, courtesy of Ben Hayes who was out of the country and um, and I said she fancy making some sounds for me. Uh, it doesn't need to deliver anything necessarily melodically, but it'd be great to have some more sounds. So we've got some a bunch of bits here, and it's very obscure. That's exactly what I wanted. Atmosphere, noise. There's another brilliant sound here at the start. And that all went in. The next step was to approach the fact that it needed a focus, it needed something else to elevate it. And I've worked with Idris Rahman before. Idris plays in Soothsayers, um, who's on my Wawa 45's record label, but also in Wildflower and Ill Considered. Actually, initially I thought about a violin solo. Um, and I had been considering that because there's other strings on the album and I was trying to think about sonically drawing things together. Um, what I in fact ended up doing was uh, bringing more of Idris into the album to balance up the fact that we had some stuff. It's always a balance like that for me. I feel like there needs to be a palette that is con continuous throughout the album if possible, especially as some of the songwriting fluctuates quite a lot. At least we can keep the instrumentation and the feeling uh, somewhat similar. So I sent off uh, this to Idris and he sent back basically two saxophone parts, little grouchy, grumbly, noisy bits that are in at the start and I reuse again at the end. And then he sent me basically uh, a long solo and it incorporated loads of incredible hooks and melodic ideas. And what I ended up doing was taking the central element of solo here and keeping that. But where I found interesting hooks that I was really into, I cut them up and I reused them in parts. That's one. Two really key bits for this track. Another outgoing melody. So I cut that together separated out on tracks to get the mixes that I wanted and the overlaying of, of certain parts. So once I had those saxophone parts in, I actually started to hear some additional melodies and ideas myself. 
So I had this one particular sound that really came to me, and that comes up into a really important part now. And the other thing was I placed another synthesizer part, uh, an arpeggio. And played with tempo, timing of it, and the filters to get some different intensities and mess around with the rhythm of the track. Really slow it right down. Really, really fast and wild. And once I had all that together, I sent it back to Idris and said, what do you think? And Idris said, shall I lay some more bits on it to bring out the cuts and the melodies that you've played with? Uh, to which I said, of course, yes. That's all in the mix part of the project. But this basically was Love in Dreams. As it began, as you would call probably the demo stage. As we went into the mix environment, Idris was recording all the other saxophone, clarinet and flute parts. And we'll have a listen to how that all came together. So we're back over in trusty Universal Audio Luna. I like it because it's like a traditional mixing desk and uh, Ableton's great for creating, but I really, really prefer a traditional environment for understanding how the mix comes together and uh, rooting things into groups. So like all my drum tracks come down to one single track here, uh, bass, all my keys into a single track, all my synthesizers into a single track and so on. Syn horns in here and then I've got things like reverbs. This is a really straightforward mix. This track really just was such a dream to be honest with you. The more we added to it, the more it just unfolded. Uh, and sometimes you overcrowd things, but we just kept putting layers on this and it just, for me, certainly it kept getting better and the energy just kept developing. So most of what was captured in the production stage, uh, the creative stage, uh, is just carried over to the mix. And you can see I've done very little. I'm not using a lot of different uh, plugins or EQs or compressors or anything like that. Uh, so by this stage, you can see down here, I have the first sax hook section that Idris sent plus the second solo section that he sent. Uh, and I brought out those atmosphere, those grumbles um, separately. And then here we go. This was what Idris sent through in addition. A lot of bass clarinet, some clarinet and some flute, all that add on to that melody. Simple. this sound so much. The mic reverb on the synthesizer, the mixture of the clarinet and the flutes. I was going to get choir on here as well and I don't know whether it ended up being laziness, time or whatever but it didn't happen. I kept worrying that I was going to overdo it. And that is pretty much it. We've got Chris's final drum sound in here. So I'd put a little bit of reverb on, I'd put it in a room space, um, different to the room that he'd actually recorded it in, to just give it a little extra space that just goes out to the sides, comes out into the mix plenty to give it all that extra density that we'd lost from coming from the sample. So yeah. In Dreams, you know, what started off as a, a synthesizer chord and an idea in terms of playing with that and playing with pitches, uh, adding chords, uh, taking a sample and turning it into real life with Chris, um, adding some more just randomness with Matthew Gordon, and then allowing Idris to not only bring in an idea but then. Uh, through communicating online as always with this album still throw ideas back and forth to each other and inspire each other to do different things so um yeah that's love and dreams i really hope you enjoy the single it's out now on albert's favorites and my album is available to pre-order nothing feels like everything uh, out on october 15th
thank you for listening once again.